Hi everybody. So today um, I'm going to show you, this is actually my first video, so please be um, patient with me, but I'm going to show how to do this modified bloom. Um, I posted, a couple people asked about it, so I'm going to show you how you can create this. So um, what we're going to start with is I use either um, Glidden GLE 3000 as my base, my pillow, or Color Place White, um, just straight out of the bottle. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put some of this on here. like so and then i'm going to take my little tool here and spread it out and this is a modified bloom technique so this is going to be the um the special recipe for the blooms and um i found one that i really like and i will put um the recipe down in the comments or the description depending on where i put this video so i'm spreading this out to the edges it will get down over the edges so you just spread it out let some of it get down over there and I just kind of make sure that all the edges at least have some paint on them. Just in case it doesn't, um, I don't spin off enough so that it can cover the sides later. So I always make sure that there's some paint on the entire edge. So here we go. And I really like this recipe. It works for me every time now. It took me um, quite a while to get the balloon to work. And really what I found out was that I had to get that Australian Floetrol. Um, it is expensive, but you only use the tiniest amount of it. So it's really not that expensive because this, the container is going to last you forever. Okay, so I have everything on the sides. Now I'm just going to spin it so it evens out a little bit. Well, of course, that goes sliding because I have to take that stuff off of my, um, my bars. I had to go over and get a paper towel, and since this is my first video, I'm going to make sure this is still working, and it is. So good. Okay, so next, we want to put on our colors. So I am doing a mixture of paints and pigments. So what I have learned is you never want the pigment to be your first color down because it sinks into your pillow and that doesn't work well. It just disappears into it and you've lost the vibrancy of your pigment. So the first color I'm starting with is Amsterdam Permanent Blue Violet. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to make three circles on this board, on this canvas. Now, you want to use enough paint, I have found, so that when you blow it out, you don't lose all your colors. And so that's good. The smaller the canvas, I'm going to do three flowers on here. The smaller the canvas, the smaller your, your circle here needs to be. The larger the canvas, you better put a lot down because you're going to want it to be much bigger. So that was the permanent blue violet. Now I have um, Thalo Blue from Amsterdam. 
And I also found out that um, the Amsterdam paints, while they're more expensive, you use less of them. So it's really going to last you a long time. So let's get this down. Okay. Next is going to be Brilliant Blue by Amsterdam. And since this painting is smaller, we really don't need to go as big. So what I have my colors mixed with are one tablespoon of Varathane Triple Thick Varnish and one tablespoon of um, Glidden Base 3. You can do um, any of the base threes I have found. They're, they're what, when you go to the paint store, it's what they mix the paint with. So a base three or, let me look here at my little recipe card. Oh, and I'll show you this in the meantime. I have created myself a recipe card, so I don't have to think about this every time I mix my paints. Um, so the Glidden Base 3 or uh, Base C, you can use any of those types of things for your colors. So I do one tablespoon of the Varathane or Rust-Oleum Triple Thick, um, one tablespoon of the Base 3 or Base C, and then just two little pea-sized dots of paint. So really, that's all that you're using. And that's why I have decided I'm going to get the Amsterdam paints from now on. Better quality, gives you a better look, and you don't use much. They're going to last me years, probably. So, okay, this one is Anita's Gold Metallic. This is not an expensive paint, and it turns out really pretty in this painting. It's got a pretty gold hue to it. And I'm putting that down underneath because I find if you put it on the top, it kind of disappears with the when you go to blow this out. So I'm I kind of put my um my golds, my coppers, I put those in the middle of all the colors. Uh this one is Deco Art Extreme Aquamarine. This has, this is a metallic too. So I'm going to put that next. Okay. And we don't need a whole lot because this is a smaller canvas. This is an eight by eight I'm doing. And then the last color I'm using is um, Primary Elements Jasmine Pigment. Now you can you mix this with that same mixture I was talking about before. Um, and you just put in a little dollop of pigment, just like you would squeeze in your Amsterdam paint. Same thing. So all my paints are mixed the same and I mix them all in these little cups. And when the cup gets low, I just add more ingredients to it and stir it up and I just keep using these cups. Okay, so now we, I had to get my cell activator. So let's talk about cell activator. I touched on it a little bit before. I found out that just go for the Australian Floetrol, but there is another option. So um, I have mixed one tablespoon of Australian Floetrol a half a teaspoon of Amsterdam um, oxide black paint and that's my cell activator. Now you can try to make your own Australian cell activator by doing um, two tablespoons um, 
regular Floetrol, American Floetrol, um, one tablespoon the Black Oxide Amsterdam paint, and add 10 drops of Minwax Pre-Stain. And that does give you the Australian feel, but the only problem is, is it doesn't give you as many cells as the Australian. So I like the Australian. So I'm going to put on my cell activator and I like to make sure I get enough of it on there so that when I blow, it's going to have enough to spread out. So I usually do a little bit bigger than a pea size amount. And then I'm going to show you Um, first of all, I'm going to pop that bubble and I think that's the only bubble. Yes. Okay. So now we are ready to blow and I'm going to show you what I use because I like both of these the best. I got this hair dryer at Walmart. I love it. This is the, it's called the flower and, um, it has two speeds and I like the lowest speed because it doesn't go crazy and blow everything too far and make a uh, ruin the painting. And then I have the little leaf blower. I don't know why, but my, um, my lung power is not enough to blow these just by hand, by mouth. So I like this little thing with the little attachment I got on Etsy works perfectly. And this, um, hair dryer. Those are my, I use the hair dryer for the bigger ones and the little leaf blower for the smaller ones. So we're going to get ready. So what you want, I hold this upside down so it's more horizontal. You want to blow horizontal. So I'm just going to blow these out and I'm not going to blow real far. And I'm going to take my time. So if you blow too far, too quick, you end up losing the vibrancy of your colors, okay? And you don't want to do that. So you just kind of want to take your time and blow the black over everything. And you can see the cells that are turning. All right, that one I'm done with. I'm gonna to move to the next one. And you can blow them into each other. But like I said, I'm not blowing too far. You don't, you don't wanna to blow to cover the entire canvas yet. At all, ever. You want to blow. See, now that one's starting to turn white because I blew too much there. So that's how I know I need to stop. And then, once you've blown it out a little bit, you're going to spin to get your larger sizes. Okay, you're going to spin to cover that canvas. That was my major problem in the beginning. I just had it in my mind that I wanted to blow this until it was covering the whole canvas. And I lost all the vibrancy of my colors. And it took me a long time to realize that that's what I was doing. So now, I don't like this black here, so I'm going to use a turkey baster. This works really well. It helps me direct my breath. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to blow straight down, but tiny little puffs. And I don't know if you can see, but cells are popping up immediately. And that's how you get rid of all that black and get those cells to come up. Now this one needs a lot of work. There they come.
And you've also got to let give it time to work. Don't be in a hurry because you might think, oh my gosh, I'm not getting any cells. They take a few, they take like two minutes to come up. So I'm done. I think I'm done with my turkey baster. Yes, I like that. So now I'm going to spin it a little and let it expand. And then we'll get to the point where we do the modifications to it. So I want it to spin some more or spread some more. All right, it's getting bigger. See how it's starting to cover the whole canvas? I'm going to spin the other direction. Okay, I kind of like that because I want some negative space to it. I want to leave some of the white. But I also want this to get to the point where the, the white has evened out. Now it's getting really big, see? So I have a little bit right here. I'm just going to come in here with my finger and kind of smooth that out. There's one little dent there that didn't have color on it. I'm going to spin, spin it one more time to smooth that out. Okay. And now... We are going to do the modifications to it. So I like to use this little thing. It's like a little embellishing tool. Or you can use the end of a paintbrush, the other end of a paintbrush. And all you're going to do is first I like to go in and I like to, and I use the little end, I like to just kind of bring that out. Wipe after every thing you do. So I'm just kind of picking where the ends are here. Like where it would be natural to have a little wisp coming out. This is really pretty. And I drag it out and wipe every time you have to wipe because you don't want to dip paint on your um, completed canvas. And you see how these few little wisps, wisps really make a difference to the painting. I'm going to throw one more here. And maybe one more right there. Okay. So I think I'm happy with my wisps. Now, to get your floral, um, your petal look, you start out in the white and you drag down. And you always want to be going to the same point. You want to be heading towards something. So that I've decided that's my point there. And look at the look this gives you. And you can make bigger petals. You can make smaller petals. So that's that kind of leaf. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to come down like this. And everything's going to go to that point. And you can put a little swirl in there. Kind of let it drip off and then lift so it doesn't. Get on your other parts of your paint. And go right to there. So everything on this one is going to go to there. Go to there. Now this one. I'm going to take down to here, down to here. And you know what I like about this type of painting is it's not wham, bam, you're done. 
you know, the other ones go so quick and you're like, you spent all that time getting ready for it and thinking about it and it's done. And this one takes a little time and it kind of, I, I like to paint to relax. I find this really relaxes me. So this one just takes a little bit longer to do. It makes you feel like you accomplished something and you're not going through tons of canvases either because it takes you a little longer. So that's kind of nice. I hope this video is still going. I should probably check. Since this is my first time. I don't know how long it will go. Oh, it's still going. Good. Okay, so I'm happy with that flower. I think that's done. So I'm going to move on to the next one. I just love these colors. And you kind of want to pick colors that go with each other and not colors that will get muddy together. So the blues, the purples, the pinks, they all go very nicely together. And I'm kind of doing this video quicker than this would take me longer as I made it more detailed but this is good enough to give you an idea of how to do it but i just love the look that the petals give it it makes it look so much more finished and it just really Spruces it up. So what I'm doing is my my first one that I showed you at the beginning of the video. That was an eight by ten, and I'm going to make these two eight by eights to go alongside of that eight by ten and kind of make like a triptych because. I like this painting so much it's like my favorite but again everything when you're doing the blowing here you really want to take your time and don't blow too far you're not aiming to blow all the way out to the edges that was that's my most important tip you're aiming to just get your flower your bloom done before you start to lose vibrancy the minute you see you're losing your your colored vibrancy you want to stop blowing and then spin the rest the goal is not to get out to the outside of the canvas and it took me about a month and a half to learn that <laughs> And once I did, it was like the light bulb went on. Okay. I like that one. One more to go. And then you'll get to see the finished product. Now remember, you want these little things to go to the same point. It makes it look more natural. And I've only been painting for about two months now, but I was mesmerized by this bloom technique and I knew that was what I wanted to do. And it took me two months to figure it out <laughs> with the right type of mixtures. 
and recipes. And I tell you what, once you find a recipe that you like, then it all becomes fun because now you're no longer experimenting and getting aggravated. So just keep trying. You'll get there. Don't give up. Okay. I will probably edit some of this out because it's taking so long. But just remember, always wipe your tool off before you go back in or you'll have a bunch of color in your white out there. I know a lot of people, they just go right through their cells. I don't like to do that. I work too hard to get those cells. I don't want to mess them up. <laughs> now I have also seen, you can also, when you're laying down your paint at first, you could put a green um cell over there green one over here just a tiny one so it ends up looking like leaves all right so i'm pretty happy with this i might just take and put a few more wisps here because i think the wisps look really pretty What do you think? I know you can't talk to me, but <laughs> I think I like it. I think I'm satisfied. Now, what I'm going to do is just come back in here, right here, and get a few more cells right there. Otherwise, I'm happy. So, I'm going to give it one more spin. I am going to be creating a YouTube account, I think. So, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel once I get it up. But you will see that after um, I get the video up. And I have a lot of my paintings on Facebook at Laura's Crafty Cabin. And that's it, folks. I am I am happy with that. So I'm going to take, I'm going to grab the camera and come and show you. I can get it out. I'm going to zoom in. You can see the cells. Now I'm in my shadow. Let me go over here. I have some videography uh, work to accomplish here. A little bit too zoomed in. There's the whole painting. Very pretty. I love it. The cells are gorgeous too. And I just love the modifying. So this is called the Modified Bloom. And I love that it takes over almost the entire canvas. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's helpful. And um, I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.